AI, AI, AI. Everywhere I'm going, I'm hearing the word AI. Every conference I'm attending, I'm hearing the word AI. In the last conference I attended, uh, there was a person talking about uh, LLMs, about AI, and there was something which uh, struck me that everybody's talking about how to feel about it, how we can probably think of using it, but nobody was giving me concrete answers for how exactly can I use it. So I was sitting with the guy and uh, I talked to him. He told me that, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the same. And uh, that's what we are going to explore today. We're going to bring LLMs from the world of imagination uh, to reality. We're going to implement them uh, with test automation tools and see what happens then. I am Shrey. I'm a neural AI lead in Phrase. And today I'm going to be talking about a very dear topic of mine, integrating QA um, with LLMs and seeing what happens after that and how it can induce self-healing capabilities to test automation tools. For this talk today, we'll be talking basically about three things. As you can guess, one will be the auto test automation tool, the large language models, and integrating both of them. To first understand this thing, we need to understand the test automation tool. So very basically what a test automation tool does is it's able to mimic a user. It's able to interact with the elements. It's able to run the tests and give me a result. I'm talking about Cypress, Playwright, Selenium, any tool you can think of. Um, these were the common things which I found out that I can do with this with any tool. Right. So it's not limiting me to a particular tool. This is the jo uh, common understanding. But out of these uh, four, two are th the ones which we'll be focusing on the most. One is interacting with elements. The other one is the test runner capabilities. You can think about it uh, till then, but it will be coming up in the next few slides. And I'll be joining the dots on what it brings to the table. Then we talk about large language models. What is a large language model? To put it in a very simple context, a large language model is nothing but a machine learning model which was trained on large amounts of data. That's it, right? Then we try to understand what are the pros and cons of these LLMs? Because yes, I want to do it, but I need to first understand what can go wrong and what it actually brings to the table. So for LLMs, when we think about it, they are able to understand the code which you give it. It is able to pinpoint issues with it, and it's able to also suggest improvements on your code. And it's able to generate new code from the code which you have given, uh, depending on what is uh, the perfect uh, um, solution for the particular situation. Then we think about cons. The cons are outdated information, hallucination, and context limitation. Outdated information, what does that mean? That means that my model is trained on some data. As you, uh, I told you that it's just nothing but a machine learning model, but trained on some data. The data can be old because I might be wor working with some latest JavaScript version. My model might be trained on an old JavaScript version. Then we have hallucination problems that we probably uh, are getting wrong answers from the LLM model and it doesn't know, it thinks it's correct. Or we can have context limitations. We'll be talking about this in the next few slides and how we can overcome these problems. Let's first talk about outdated information. When we think about outdated information, we think about how we can get the new information into the system. So either I go to JavaScript website every day. I'm like, okay, um, uh, whenever a new update comes, I pull, download it and upload, upload it in my model, fine tune it, or whatever you want to do with it. Or you have some polling mechanism which keeps on checking every day if the new version of JavaScript came and you want to pull it in. Or you can do live data sources. There's a little bulb over there because I want to, you to connect some dots now. So the test automation model is offering me interacting with the web elements. 
what does that mean? It's able to go and click on something. It's able to fill some information on the web page. To do that, it knows exactly what is where. And it's interacting with the DOM. So what I can do is I can pull the information from the DOM and use it for my model. This information of DOM is the live information. It's the current state of your application. It's not an older state. It is exactly what is there, what the user is seeing right now, and it's given to the language model. So that is how I'm solving the outdated information. Next is hallucination. So when I think about hallucination, it basically means that my model is giving me wrong answers. To be, uh, make it very simple, what can I do? I can have a verification service which will check my answers. Now go, going back again, um, my test automation tool is giving me test runner capabilities and it's also giving me results. So can I use the code which is generated by the LLM, run it in the test runner to verify if it's correct, and then append it to my code if it's correct. But if it's not correct, then I'd use that error which was generated by the test runner and give it to the LLM model. Because one of the pros of the LLM model is that it is able to understand the problems and it's able to fix it. So even if it's the wrong code which is generated in the first time, we give the error to the LLM model and ask it to fix the error. Next, context. There's a little um, crown on top because I like to say context is the king when you think about LLM models. And this is a very basic example of what happens. So if you give the, this image on the left to an LLM model and ask it to um, call it, uh, tell what animal this is, it's marking it as a tiger. But if you give the image on the right, it marks it as a dog. What changed? What changed is that it got more context. It was able to understand there are some bars which is casting a shadow on the dog and it's a dog. It's not a tiger. And that is what we have to understand when we think of LLMs. The LLMs need to know the whole context for them to give a good answer. So when we think about it in the terms of test automation, what does that mean? That means maybe there's a submit button on the page and there's another submit button, maybe inside another layer or maybe inside a pop-up or um, maybe inside another frame. And you're giving only the submit button inside the frame to, uh, this, uh, to the LLM model. And what it thinks is that, okay, there's only one submit button. So just click on that submit button, fine. But it will not work. And even if you keep sending the error back that, you know, there, there are two submit buttons, it will never be able to find out the error because it will always see that one submit button. So what you have to do is you have to send the whole DOM to the particular LLM model and see what happens then because now it knows there are two submit buttons and it will be able to choose the right one. Cool, then now we know how it should theoretically work and let's put it in action then. This is a little video of um, what I did and I've break, broken it down into some steps. Here you can see a test case which was written in Zephyr, two of them and they have some test steps and what is the expected output of each step. Then I go to the LLM model, uh, the script and run it. And you can see that the test cases were pulled in the background from Jira. And now the code has been generated. So what did we see? We saw that the test cases, which were in Jira, got converted into Playwright code. Good, so it took every step which was in the test case, converted it into equivalent Playwright script. But that's not what we, what we came here for. We came here to understand how can we reduce the maintenance efforts? Because we are inducing self-healing capabilities. This is not self-healing, this is generation. So let's talk about what if my test case changes, right? So we can see here that there's only a submit button. 
because it's clicking the submit button. And I open the test case and see that it was only clicking submit button. And now I go and add an expected output. So now after clicking the submit button, I also wanted to verify that the welcome to dashboard text should be visible. This was a change which was made um, after the test case was created. And what happens now? We run the script again to fix it. And the new test cases have been pulled and we can see that the new verification line has been added. Right, so what we saw was the new step which was added was automatically pulled into the test script. How was it pulled? We'll be talking about all this uh, in, a, in a few slides, but we can see that it is able to understand that there were some changes made in the test case and the test script has to be enhanced according to it, which reduces the maintenance in terms of if the test case changes. But what if my application changes? Because that's the most common thing. Well, if you look at the last script, what's happening here is this is the little website which we are trying to test here, and it has welcome to dashboard. We inspect it and we see that the text which is welcome to dashboard is an H1 text. But in the test script, we did not say it was H1 or H2, but it was automatically able to figure out that it was an H1 locator and what text has to be uh, inputted there. Now we go and change uh, the web page. So instead of username ID has been changed to amazing username. And, but if you see the code still uses username. So if I run the code right now, it will all fail. But what, what I do now is ask it to fix it. So you can see now that all the IDs have been changed to amazing username. So what we saw was when we changed something in the application, it was automatically reflected in our testing code. And something which we see um, during all this was happening, there was something happening in the terminal and that is our key observation which is that it had one uh, attempt, attempt number one, which failed. So there was, it says there was an error, which basically means that the LLM created some output, which was not the correct output. Then we uh, checked it, we sent the error back, and the LLM then did the second attempt, which was this one, and it worked, which shows that there are times when LLM will give you the wrong answer, but with the verification service in place, you're able to correct it and provide more stability. Now, we try to understand what was happening behind the scenes. What was happening was there was um, Jira. So we had Zephyr, test cases written there. We had Playwright. So Playwright pulled the test cases from Jira and it checks if there are some new test cases. If there are any new test cases, it goes to Llama and it says, okay, there's a new uh, test case. Let's create the code for it and it runs through all the test steps one by one, which are still sent to the test runner. And the test runner runs these te uh, tests, but these are JavaScript code. When uh, the test runner says, okay, the code is good enough, it uh, adds it uh, as passed. And to check this test, it is actually running this test on the current state of application under test. So whatever your application under test is, it's running it on that. If it fails, it goes back and says, okay, it failed. Can you create a new JavaScript code? Goes back to test runner. And in my code, I've put a limit of five because I didn't want to go more than that. And if it's failing for more than five, that's probably a bug and not needs fixing. The test runner says, okay, it passed a uh, new, uh, new test case should be added. It then sends it to Mistral because Mistral is another language model and Llama is the other one. I'm using two of them because I found that one was good for one thing and the other one was good for something else. Mistral then converts all the JavaScript code into Playwright code and which is then appended into the test script. 
And this is how it works. When something starts failing, that particular test case is rewritten using Llama and Nemo, sorry, Mistral Nemo. And if everything is good, then we go to the happy path and we are all happy. Thank you. Questions?